as we're here for the 2012 USA Ultimate College Championships. I'm Brian Jones, Tyler Kinley here with Mario, Mario O'Brien, part of Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 championships. We have a great showdown for you today. Wisconsin Hodags face off against Central Florida Dogs of War, and it's sure to be a barn burner. Tyler, we have the Next Gen Tour Bus Keys to Victory for Wisconsin. What can we expect to see for them to succeed? Well, in order for Wisconsin to really take control of this game, we first need to see uh, Simmons uh, really take over and facilitate their offense. In order for their offense to be efficient and to really run well, Alex Simmons, number 12, needs to be, needs to be their main facilitator. Uh, they need to be efficient on their hucks. That doesn't mean they, they have to be perfect, but they need to take good, crisp shots, they either to space or with a nice angle so the defender doesn't have a chance from Dayu Liu and from Dan Park. Uh, Dayu's number 24, Dan Park's number 28. And finally, UCF really, really depends at clutch times on Freistatter. Six foot eight, massive guy. It's, it's the prerogative for Wisconsin to contain him. Moving on, Mario, we have some important keys to victory for Central Florida, an upstart team out of Orlando. You know, the biggest thing that Central Florida needs to do today is they need to do what got them here. Yes, they've never played in a game like this, but they need to just revert back to everything that they've put in and done in the tournaments, in the practices, in the small-sided scrimmages, in everything. Do those things, and that will lead them to victory. Also, their leaders need to lead in this game, not only on the field as players, but also mentally. They've got big names out there. We've got Freisetter, we've got Hickson, we've got Ogren on D. Those guys need to be the rock that the rest of the team can stand on. Defensively, they absolutely have to shut down those big cutters for Wisconsin, specifically Camp and Wiseman. If they can't shut those guys down, the Hodegs are gonna march down the field for easy goals, and then their defense is gonna be allowed to grind. And finally, Freistetter absolutely needs to perform, and that doesn't just mean catching the disc deep. Of course he's a threat. He needs to be multi-dimensional. He needs to be able to not only cut deep when it's open, but also take advantage of the huge gainers that the Hodeg defenders are sure to give him because they're so afraid of his deep threat. The offense will go through Freistetter. He always has to be in a threatening place for Central Florida to succeed. The we see both teams in a huddle. Uh, Wisconsin's been here how many times? It feels like countless times. They're a, they're a North Central region mainstay here at Nationals. But just as you said, and, you know, I take a little, I'm not sure I agree about calling UCF an upstart team. Um, we were talking before about Andrew Roca being a, a huge leader in getting this program going. UCF now coming in as uh, one of the top seeds and a, a real shot at the championship. Uh, Brian, what kind of effect has Andrew, and Andrew Roca had on this team? Uh, it, unquestionably, he's the emotional leader of this team. And you could, we could tell right there in the huddle he was getting them jacked up and ready to play. But more importantly, we see a lot of young coaches come into the game and bring that emotional level that's needed, but not the strategic uh, alertness to make changes when necessary. And these two teams, Wisconsin both and Central Florida, Central Florida have made significant changes since they last met at warm-up uh, tournament in February in Tampa, Florida. And it's a completely different looking team. This was a team that relied only on Frey Statter to begin with, and now they've evolved where they use all of their players. They swing the disc, they utilize the break side. They become what a college team is supposed to become. I think one of the interesting storylines here is the extreme experience that Wisconsin has coming into this. It's like Nationals fields are just the, the norm for them. Um, they're used to it. They've been there, they have a thing that they do, whereas this is UCF's first time ever at Nationals. Yeah, you they, they have no routine. You think about Wisconsin, Looks not like just the, the players. The players were the in the finals zone. last year, but you're also looking at the Dogs coaching staff. Hector Valdivia has been at multiple college nationals. Some sort of crazy streak of 10 club championships in a row. They've got Ben Feldman as an assistant coach helping out inside. The These guys are all have huge game experience, and that translates to victories during the regular season and gets you deep into tournaments. It's, a, it's lopsided when it comes to experience in this matchup, but it's Wise, gonna be a good game. Wiseman starting things off, Nation in the back of the end zone, finding best. Pochi defense here by Wisconsin playing off the handlers, going through the zone. Up 
backfield now. Wharton going into the base offense, finding best. And an early D foul called by Central Florida. Hodak's come out in a junk defense, just disrupting the initial play of Central Florida. Then they tighten down into man, and then they create a tough situation. This is a great play that the, by the defender. Looked pretty clean. Yeah, Thomas Coolidge made a good play, trying to trying to catch up on that up line D. I, I liked I liked his. Per That's great D. It's overruled. Uh, no foul. First turn right there. Wisconsin having a chance to strike early, getting up. On top of Central Florida would be huge. Swing to Simmons, and Simmons lays out for it to maintain possession. Upfield to Alter. Now a miscommunication. Looking for Hart and Central Florida back to action best. You know, an interesting matchup to take a look at here is best, the center handler. And that's Coolidge. Trying to go over the top. Again, some turnovers here and overthrown, can't get to it. And we have a little bit of nerves in these opening minutes. These opening minutes have been strange. The first thing I noticed is UCF looks calm, but maybe a little too calm on that one. It just, it feels like they're, they, it's too easy. They're, they're, they're taking it a little too easy. And on the flip side, we saw Alter zing that inside, really ripping that. And here, here, uh, Coolidge. Coolidge looking for that space at, and Really early count. They're Wisconsin looks jittery. This game is vitally important for both teams as it's pretty much going to be for the pool. These are the number one and two seeds. Barring California as the third seed, upsetting one of them. This could be the team to move on and get the precious buy into the quarterfinals. Last year, any team that had to go through an extra pre-quarters game did not advance to the semifinals. So this might be for the championship for either team this early on. Best, looking for Frey Stoddard, gets things going. Big D by Wisconsin. There's some incredible handler defense going on right now from Coolidge. I talked to Hector, the coach for Wisconsin before the game. He said they're going to try to stop. Hickson looking deep. By putting Coolidge on him. Ray Stoddard catches the goal. Gets things going and Central Florida survives that opening point. Survives. Coolidge came up with two Ds on the first point. Great initial defensive sequence by the Hodags. Maybe a little jittery on their O, but this is going to be a grinder. You can already tell. Both teams trying to feel each other out. Expect this game to settle out after a few points here and th teams to start to find their groove. We'll see how the Wisconsin offense comes out. We can already see the evidence of Wisconsin being here before, upping the intensity when it matters most, coming in this pool play game, knowing that this is right when, if they're gonna get to the championship game, it starts right now. We just commentated the University of Michigan flywheels win over University of North Carolina Pleiades. Um, the first difference I notice, and it's, it's, it's noticeable, is the roster size. We are looking at a Central Florida roster, 24 man deep, and against a Wisconsin roster, 27, the roster limit man deep. Instantly, the sideline energy, the sideline noise is, is palpably different. Central Florida getting set to pull. We have Frey Stoddard and Hickson staying on the line, two of their biggest players, but Mike Ogren might just be the defender to watch out for. Yeah, Ogren's usually gonna match up on one of those big cutters for the Hodags, either Con Camp or Wiseman. Park, forehand cannon out there, finds Donovan underneath. Looking upfield, Wisconsin moving it up, Camp. Colin Camp broke out last year in the semifinals. Can he repeat that performance? Liu, looking back for Simmons, around to Park. Park I.O. up to Simmons and quick dish for the score and Wisconsin sideline comes alive. A real lesson in vert stack, cut from the back, work it up the open field, and then take good shots. Yeah, they really they really worked it up the open field, just like you said, Tyler. Really uh, watching the Central Florida defense, and this is something I noticed watching them at Easterns. They played downfield. They almost are not anticipating cutters to come underneath. That was four consecutive underneath cuts 
that were wide open because the, the defender was almost too close, not anticipating that they were going to make that turn for all those easy passes. As you can see here, the defenders are too close, and the cutters just come ease underneath easily for open gainers 15 yards at a time, working down to the red zone. Andrew Roca has remarked oftentimes that his team is slow to start, and in this game, you may not be able to afford that. Defense must be going early for Central Florida to survive. Looks like number 21, Dave White. I agree with, with an earlier statement. Uh, both teams do seem to be feeling each other out. The defensive pressure there was mediocre, um, but I think I think the D is figuring it out. They are seeing what what Wisconsin is going to attack with, and I, I guarantee they're slowly going to clamp down. Nations back to receive. Upfield gain to Bullock. Back to Nations. Best streaking downfield, stretching Wharton. Up to Nations. The center handler for Central Florida has never seen a defender like Coolidge. Huge layout block for the Hodag. Zach Alter comes up huge underneath. Here we see it. That's just a great layout. And that is typical Hodag defense. Anticipate the under, try to beat him to the spot, and just make a physically incredible play. Marshall finding Wiseman. Call on the play. Quick little ditty about Wiseman. Coming back this year after sciatic nerve damage, actually having, could not practice through most of the spring season up until mid-March, being forced to only merely jog at practice, has made a big comeback and actually gained the Callahan nominee from his team. Big honor and just shows exactly what his team thinks of this impact player coming back and how he's going to help him out at this tournament. Counts on zero. Sorry, counts on three. Marshall, Nations trying to not let anything back. Io to Wiseman. Almost identical cut to previously, and a big D. That one by Jeremy Langdon, a defensive player turned offense for Central Florida. Hodak Cutter knew he made a mistake. He pulled up on his cut, did not run through the disc, led to a D. Best. Looking back for Nations. Defensive intensity for Wisconsin is incredibly high. And another D. Nation's calling a strip on this play. Doesn't look like he had a grip on it. The fans all have their opinion. They're voicing it. Now we see it again in slow motion here. Oh, that is questionable. Oh, yeah, it, that's that's a tough call. That that's is. a really tough call for the observer. That's an observer's Football. test right there. Turnover. I could see that one going either way. Marshall, no. Wisconsin changing things up off the sideline. Wiseman stretching the field. Alexander overthrows, underthrows his man back. Hart was available. Best. Trying to go for the around and nice backhand break. Pick call on the field. Best really trying early to initiate cuts off of quick movement get Central Florida's offense started. This goes back to John Best. Hoday defenders are focused and locked down right now. There are no easy passes. There are no easy throws. Best having to break the mark just for an open shot. Bettis looking for Best. That's kind of the counterpart here to Simmons on the Wisconsin side, Freistatter. Big 6'8 frame. Trying to dig and dunk here with Wharton. Wharton scuba over the top, and deed by Wisconsin. That's three Ds for Coolidge starting the game. Nice in the end zone by Thomas Kulich, it's clear that both teams are biting incredibly hard on fakes. Um, I'd like to see more of what I saw a bit ago is UCF hit the open side, went up line, and both the mark and the defender way overplayed that up line. And oh, a huge wow. D by Nations. 
this getting is just it a back. Defensive showcase. A display of athleticism from both teams so far. Best. Stoppage on the play. Central Florida lined up in a vertical set out of their end zone. One dump back. Bettis. Now just outside the end zone. Big move to get open. Flips it for the score to Langdon. Central Florida once again surviving 2-1. to one. Number nine, Kyle Bettis into the end zone. At this rate, it's going to be a 10-9 game. Long points, hard fought. And that two, favors the Hodags. If you go 10-9 as Central Florida, that means Freystatter is probably playing almost all those points. Ogren's playing all the D points. You're going to have to have Best out there working hard for every single point. If the game stays close and goes the distance, the advantage goes to the Hodags. They're known for winning games with their legs. Especially with the depth of that 27-man roster. Back in 2008, when the Hodags maybe assembled one of the greatest college teams to ever be, 27 men, all of them played in the finals at least one point, which is an impressive testament to that program and the way Hector Valdivia has that team developing over the course of a season. It really also speaks to the culture because if you are a player who plays one point, two points in a game, it's not easy to step on the field and bring immediate intensity and 100% D, but they do it, and they did it then. The test will be to see if they can do it now. They, as, you, as you remarked, Mario, they are banged up, and I, I question whether they have the actual depth that it will take to play that deep in a game. I'm not sure that it favors them as, as, much, as, as much as you might think. We'll see. Crawley Adams, freshman with the pole, an addition, late addition this year to the D-line, stepping up huge for Central Florida. Park. Surveying the field, loves the forehand cannon. Here we see Central Florida fart morsing backhand. Liu. Finding space along the sideline. Spice back to Liu. Big swing. Simmons goes up and brings it down. Out to space, picked up by Donovan. Park putting it deep. Jimmy chases Ogren. Wisconsin makes the catch. He holds two to two. What really stood out to me there was the depth and really the two deep of Wisconsin's cutters. They were extremely deep and only when they worked it up about 20, 25 yards was that deep shot available. Right. Um, until it got that close, it, it, the cutters were 50 yards downfield. Yeah, the deep shot came after there was a gainer exactly. because then the depth was appropriate to make that deep cut. <coughs> Before then, Wisconsin's, throw, Wisconsin's cutters were just far too deep. We had an opportunity, all of us got an opportunity to see Wisconsin earlier in the year in the semifinals versus Oregon. And this looks like a completely different team. They just came ready to play so far with the defensive intensity. Just have not been able to execute. And Central Florida looks like they're gasping a little bit, just trying to hold on on offense. Trying to find a way to get their defensive intensity up. You know, they look like a different team because in a lot of ways they are a different team. I talked to Coach about the uh, before the game. He told me that they made some significant changes to both their starting O and starting D line going into regionals. They partially it was because of injuries, and partially they just realized it wasn't clicking. They made some changes, they adjusted at regionals. And if you tried to scout the Hodags before this tournament, your scout is going to be off because they're throwing different lines and they are a different team, just like you were saying. Nations. High pass brought down by Bullock up to Langdon. Metro Florida offense moving a little bit more smooth here. Nations holstering the huck with Frey Stoddard deep. Bullock. Frey Stoddard sliding grab. Out to space to Langdon. Makes the catch in the back of the end zone. Three to two. Central Florida leads. I'm gonna say it right now. I think, I think we're seeing Central Florida start to get their legs underneath them. Um, 
my prediction is they take this game by a multiple point lead. Watching them earlier today against MSU, they were good. Uh, their offense was diligent. It was well regimented. They took really crisp shots. They took what was there, and they cut well for all the good opportunities that they had on throws. I like this UCF team this game, and especially if Freistetter can hit on deep shots. You know he's going to be backed because the Hodags don't want him to go deep. So if he catches a big gainer, that's going to open up that space deep. And he's been on with his throws today. Coach Roca has been working with him to develop those throws because he knew they were going to be a threat if he had them. And if he's hitting with those deep shots, Central Florida will be tough to beat. And that Central Florida offense looked good there. In contrast, the Wisconsin cutters getting so deep, looking a bit disjointed. They need to clean that up. They can be in this game, but not with that offense. Number one, Brawley Adams to pull for Central Andrew Florida. Roca instituted kung fu throwing at Ben Wiggins' routine. That has gotten once a week for an hour, getting his team with all his individual players ready with all the throws, and you can see it paying off for Freistadter. Up to Liu. Camp. Ogren on camp. Liu. Spice. Liu. Wisconsin offense spreading the field. Better depth here for their cutters. Camp. Big layout by Hickson. Can't quite get there. Donovan makes the catch. Liu. Really taking control here. Simmons not on the field. Camp. Again, the cutters are all sitting so deep for the Hodex. There's nowhere to cut back there. They need to either start more shallow or focus on moving the disc with your handers rather than sitting and trying to look downfield for so long. Another Liu. interesting note is any reset we've seen from Wisconsin has been lateral. Oh, that's the first reset we've seen upfield. Anytime they go backwards, they extend that distance even more. Big grab by Spice over a bidding Central Florida defender. Fits it in just outside the end zone. Becker lofts it up to Camp. Camp with the goal. This game, both offensive holding, no break so far. Despite the amount of turnovers we saw early, both teams settling down a bit. Finding a rhythm. It's two goals for Camp, and if I'm not mistaken, he had an incredible game last year. In the semifinals, it's Colorado goals, right here on this field. Eight goals in one game for Con Camp. This is this is his home turf. He absolutely dominated that game. It's been interesting. Colin Direction Camp coming into this game the actually three seems three. to me to be a bit underrated player. He definitely broke out in that game last year. Got in the next gen. Went throughout the summer. But he had a mediocre season. He was known as a case of a person who could have a little bit of a case of the drops at times. And here, I think he can really take advantage of the matchup if, if Central Florida isn't ready for him. I think the differentiator for him is that he has not only the size and the speed and the athleticism to, to be a good deep cutter, but his timing and his game IQ is there to really take advantage of, of good power positions from handlers and good spacing. Wiseman with the pole. Nations, a transfer into Central Florida this year. The Hodag's slow to get down. Best. Freistadter underneath. Real field to Wharton. All on the play. Neither of these teams, strangers to physicality. Wisconsin playing in the North Central, and Central Florida having to go through Many tough games against rival Florida and regionals. Hodags love the stall one bump. They get it's physical clear. with you. They get physical with you, and then and then they step off. It's a pattern. You wonder if you're going to see a TMF for any of that behavior. Warren putting it up for Bettis, not the usual suspect. And Wiseman comes up with the D in combination with another Wisconsin <laughs> defender. Good help, D from Wiseman. There, that's the kind of Callahan behavior you see. I was, I watched Wiseman's Callahan video, and I actually loved it. It wasn't full of the Knicks Lance, beautiful throws, Alex Thorne, perfect 
pucks, but it was just he was doing the work. He Rob. did what needed to happen, and you really got to love that. That's a great teammate. That's a great and player to have. Was there too and played a big role. Wisconsin looking for the break opportunity. Alexander upfield to Hart. Freistadter trying to defend the end. Great Big throw. Big gainer. All on the play. Surprised we didn't see that go up. Hodags have generated, generated a ton of turnovers early in this half. Wouldn't be surprised if I saw Valdivia get his team to call a timeout right here. Make sure they get exactly the look they want because they've been playing a little bit frantic. Putting out the space, oh, Wiseman is there. Shot. Bookends for Dave Wiseman, and Wisconsin starts off with the first break of the game, goes up four to three, and their sideline and the crowd is electric. Full 27 deep storming the field. That's that's a rush. That helps build the momentum. That helps get your heartbeat raised when you're entering onto this D-line. And Central Florida sees that. As they get scored on, they are swarmed by the Hodags, and that's intimidating. It is, especially for a team who's this is their first year. I can't I can't say more about how different it is to be at Nationals as a player than any other tournament in the year. Uh, most players on any team behave slightly differently because this is everything. This is the season on the line, and things change. People act differently. It's just the pressure of the tournament can take over sometimes, and I'm incredibly curious to see how UCF plays and reacts to that this game. Interesting so far across the board, we're seeing Wisconsin, either they have players with 100% completion percentage or zero. So there's been a few turnovers for Wisconsin, but mostly their big players, Simmons, Liu, and Park, those three big handlers that played turnover free so far in this game. I was curious to see Kelson Alexander handling on that point. He had that one notable turnover on the dump throw. He played well. He's he's clearly in the right mental place. And for Central Florida, usually Wharton throwing to Bettis deep is not the option they want. Bettis is usually back as a handler, and for them to put it deep, not without Freistadter there, it was a lofty huck. Freistadter and Hickson can come down with those, but not some of the smaller UCF players when Dave Wiseman is giving chase. You know, on these downwind pulls, you, you got to put them in. Giving that large that large brick away, whereas you could have a, as we saw in the game before, some of those coffin corner pulls, uh, huge difference maker. Best, poaching by Simmons, finding Pettis, quick flip, Bullock, Bray Stoddard underneath, Langdon, Bullock, great movement here by Central Florida. Around, Almost bidding defender for Wisconsin. Alter was giving chase. Best. Central Florida able to get close to the end zone in the red zone here, but not moving well. Freistadter. Flips it to Bettis. For the goal. Central Florida's offense gets back, ties the game. You now I want to give a lot of credit on that point to Best. He absolutely facilitated that entire Point. He broke the mark when necessary. He reset the disc. He didn't get the assist, but the point happened because of him. And he is showing me that he is one of the top handlers in the nation. His ability to break the mark allows his cutters to cut anywhere on the field. And as a defender, if you know you're playing against a break mark thrower, you don't know what you can take away. If you, if you can't rely on your mark to take away one side of the field, what can you rely on? What, what can you even do downfield? It's just whether or not Best is going to pick you apart with one throw or the other, and they're scoring easily. Hitting those break marks also puts that downfield defender into a, a bit of a stranded position, as you said. And as Wisconsin plays a real, a real risky defense, they, they go for blocks. If they overcommit, they get burnt. And I think we saw there multiple times they got burnt. If I'm Andrew Roca, I'm really focusing on this defensive point here. I really want to see the defensive intensity step up or else I'm going to consider calling a timeout here and rally the troops a bit. Right now, Wisconsin has shown the defensive intensity, being able to get turnovers and finally converting on a break where Central Florida has only had opportunities when Wisconsin has made the mistake. And that, that is the difference between the defensive teams of, of Central Florida and, Ho and the Hodags. The Hodags dictate and force Ds. 
Central Florida so far has relied on the Hodags making mistakes. Ball all the way back to the back of the end zone. Simmons taking it at the goal line. Finding Liu. Liu jacking a backhand. Spice is there. Runs it down, a huge throw. And Wisconsin sideline is once again rallying, leading five to four. That's what the Hoda like to say, boom, headshot. I'll say it now, that's the kind of offense that's gonna, that's gonna keep the Hodags and put and really give the Hodags a win if they can continue that. Uh, everything was easy, nothing was forced. The huck was good. It was in the back five yards of the end zone, but it sat. It wasn't a tough catch. Uh, I, I like that offense. Can make things really dangerous now for Central Florida. You have to honor that huck. Really there, it's still going to be a lower percentage. That was a beautiful throw. But if I'm Central Florida, I still have to really focus on then clamping down on the underneath because that's what's killing them so far as Wisconsin, being able to move it with ease. Yeah, beautiful throw, a beautiful unmarked throw. There wasn't even a mark anywhere near him. You have to think that there was a, a miscommunication there to leave him so wide open. Central Florida coming out here in waning moments of the first half. Wisconsin is a team to know is known to go on the runs. For a, a team that's new to nationals, not afford here to waste any points. Need to keep holding here and keep the off keep the team in the game with the offense. These pulls have to be in bounds. That's the second pull to this end zone that we've seen just float out because. The thrower is going for the hero, the, the hero the shot. Well, especially if you're the Hodags, who, who thrive on the energy the of your sideline. When that disc goes up and your sideline is involved, that adds to the pressure on the offense. And it's a huge anti-climax when it just goes out of bounds and everyone's feeling awkward. I agree. Best unleashing his own backhand with Freistadter there, and he has position, makes the catch with ease. If you're, if you're Jerry McGinnis there walking away, number 14 for Wisconsin, there's not much you can do. There isn't, and he did his best to, to get a position. He had the outside, and he's really, <laughs> he's gotta do as much as he can, I think he did, to hold that outside position and try to get it to float over him, but Freistetter's a big boy. He did a great job boxing out. Freistetter really did a great job holding his position you know, and that's how you can tell if, if you do it if you do it well as an offensive player, uses his body, doesn't even have to jump, just shields the defender and makes the catch. Freistadter comes from a basketball background, almost walked on, in my conversation earlier, almost walked on to Central Florida, but decided that didn't want that commitment and picked up a disc instead, and that's what we're able to see him here now. And that makes the dogs of war very happy. Not sure anybody in the nation really has anybody that can really match up well against a 6'8", speedy cutter. There are some teams out there with some big boys. The University of Michigan has two guys that are over 6'6". Spencer Jolly, I believe, is at 6'6". Six, six. And uh, last name Buxbaum, 6'8". Uh, However, Buxbaum is, a, I believe, a freshman this year. And... I'm not sure how he'd fare against uh, Freistadter, who has so much experience. Park, there's a pull. Centering to Simmons. A bit of a poachy defense from Central Florida. Liu, Simmons. Nothing available, tons of space The Hodag's underneath. extremely deep again. Freistadter almost bidding there. Off the mark, leaving a man deep. Central Florida not recovering. Finally, Wharton comes over. Spice. Liu. Oh, Around wow. flick, out to space. Tipped in the air. Hickson gets the D. That's just an unnecessary throw. It was pretty, but completely unnecessary. A blade across the length of the end zone. You could maybe argue that, that the, the Hodag receiver should have come up with it, but it was just totally unnecessary. Ill-advised decision leads to Michael Hickson with the disc on his own goal line. 
his, his cutter is just running away from him. Green for Ballantyne. Flipped in the air. Freystadter comes down with it. Steps over. Puts it deep for Hickson. Jackson. What a throw. Speedy defender coming underneath for Wisconsin. Not sure who that was, but. Absolutely blew by Hickson. That's some closing speed. O'Neill showing incredible speed, and Hickson is not a slow man by any means. Look at this closing speed. Just blows by him. You know, it, it was a great throw by Freysatter. It really was a great throw, but the close, you're right, the closing speed of the defender overtook the offensive player. Remarkable. Upfield, Freysatter giving chase. Take a look at the mark right now. The mark is pretty flat, and the dump defenders are sitting in the lane, which is why the, the Hodag cutters, with them sitting so far deep, is making it really difficult for them to complete passes downfield. Leo goes downfield to open up space and does so. Becker, Simmons, upfield, Spice, Simmons, up to Becker. Good movement here. Picked up off the ground by Park. I.O. break to Simmons. What a throw for the score. Park likes to live dangerously. And that's how the Hodegs play. They love to go for the jugular. I was talking to Hector before the game. He says, you know what, we're going we're gonna to throw everything at him. We're just going to launch all our missiles right away and blow them out of the water. Whether it's a deep shot, whether it's an I.O. break, whether it's a cross field blade, the Hodegs love to punish you and make you feel like they can do anything to beat you. And it's fun to watch. It is. The thing to notice about the Hodag's offense is the most difficult part is that first initiating throw. The cutters are so deep, it's hard to hit. And when they defend that well, it's, they, they don't advance the disc at all. They move it laterally. But once they advance the disc, that, that large 20-yard gainer, they're off to the races. And we'll see. We'll come back here and see if Central Florida can make the necessary adjustments on defense to get back in this game. We'll be back after a quick break. This is Next Gen, Net Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships. We're back in Boulder here with Wisconsin facing off against Central Florida, the number one and two seed facing off in Pool D. Mario O'Brien, we've seen some interesting developments in this game so far. Wisconsin leading six to five. Yeah, going back to those keys to the game for Central Florida. They're doing a great job at some of them, but some of them they're falling short, and that's why they're behind. Freistetter is playing great. He's catching the easy underneath. He's throwing deep well. He's got two goals and two assists so far. So that's going well. What they're not doing is shutting down the Hodag cutters after they advance up the field. Simmons is getting open at will. He's got the most touches right now for the Hodags. And they got to shut down the cutters if they want to have some success and get a break. This pole going out the back, rolling this time. Here's the good pull I was looking for. That's a difference maker. Now they're starting <coughs> near the sideline and on the end zone rather than in the middle of field 25 yards up. Andrew Roca was concerned going into this game of the shape of his players. They're playing just 60 feet under sea level in Central Florida and now coming up to this elevation. And so far, that may be the difference for the intensity. Here's a zone. Huge jumping zone by Wisconsin. For good reason, anybody who scouted Central Florida knows that zone used to be their weakness. But so far, tearing through it, Freistadter. Bullock. That is a great, great transition. Big layout by Bess, saves possession. Flick to space. Freistadter's there, can't make the play. Calling the foul on Wiseman. Now this time, Freistadter did not do a good job boxing out. He, it looked like he might feel the defender coming from the backside, but the defender just took a better angle to the disc and made a great play. Observers rule, no foul. It looked like he was almost stumbling before the defender got there, and any contact only added to that. Wiseman. Alexander. Alter. Oh, this wow. one lofty. Nation's giving chase. Wisconsin makes the grab in the back of the end zone. 
Ryan Hart with the grab, seven to five, Wisconsin leads. For those watching at home, that throw occurred because of this altitude. That thing shot up into the air and dropped like a brick. You did, that would not have happened in, in another condition. You just see the loft on this, and then suddenly it just starts dropping and dropping. The defender thinks he's got time to catch up, and suddenly it's just in front of the offender. And that's the experience for Wisconsin, just playing in Boulder just a year ago, knowing how this disc is going to react. Matt Nations, unfortunately, there, not with that experience, should have gotten in front of the defender, had the ability to, it looked like, was unable to get there in time. I didn't even expect that. That was a shocker. And it is, again, as Mario noted, Wisconsin just straight going for the jugular. They could have worked it, but heck, put the ball in the air. Shooter's got to shoot. This again, now we're looking at UCF down, needing to respond on offense. This is a must have, otherwise they go in to half, broken twice in a row. Mentally, this is a key point. Andrew Roca's got to put in the line and get them in the right mental place to score this easily. Second quarter will also come out on defense here if Wisconsin can hold, which would mean Wisconsin could conceivably come out holding nine to five right out of halftime. You think we're going to see that zone again? So Central Florida is able to rifle right through it. I don't, I don't think we'll see the, the zone again, I, I, but I do like throwing the zone. Just a, a great defensive strategist will always keep the offense guessing. Even if you know it might not lead to a break, your goal is to keep the offense guessing, keep them out of a rhythm, and here we come down in man for the Hodags. Over the best. Surveying the field, have not been able to find a cutter up field. Great moves by Bullock to get open back. Langdon. Bullock. Oh. The line of Langdon, tight quarters there. And then, once again, but a pick call on this play. Freistetter just hanging out in the back of the stack right now. He needs to come up and, and get involved. He is the biggest threat on the field, and he always either needs to be available or at least be in a threatening position. On this throw, we see an interesting call. The defender was trailing, called a pick. However, you could tell there was no chance, given his position, he could have made a play on this disc. A pick is legitimate in that he was prevented from taking that line, but the disc should stay forward because really he had no no chance of actually line. making a play on that throw. Langdon looking upfield. Now needing to clear. Finds Frey Stoddard. Drops the disc. Oh wow. Good shot between Simmons rushing. Sideline Ogren smartly picking up great switch by UCF. And now need to catch up. But we're pursuing. Hart, call on the play. I love watching the Hodeg D-line play offense. It's fun, it's fast, it's exciting. It's everything that you love about watching ultimately. At this point, if I'm Hector, I might be screaming call a timeout. This is a key point to get into half, set up a play. Tap back in, break out the space. Wiseman is there, will it sit? No. Instead, you've got a floated backhand thing to the break side that goes out of bounds. Not my, not my look. That's the second creative throw we've seen from Wisconsin that hasn't worked. Wisconsin incredibly active on the marks, knowing that Freistadter could be unleashed deep at any moment. Bullock. Best, big layup by Wisconsin. Best with a free chance. Ogren going deep. This one floating, still going. Ogren makes the catch. Welcome to Colorado. That's an 80 yard throw. Number 33, John Best with a great push in the That's end a zone. fantastic throw. 42, Mike Ogren brings it down for the dog to board score. Central Florida six, Wisconsin seven. See Ogren here on this offensive line. Usually a defensive standout. No chance, no, no, no Jordan O'Neal on the field to have that closing speed. And best delivered a bomb, that's huge. 
One thing I have not seen from Central Florida is much poaching or help D. They're really keyed in man-to-man, -man, one -on one-on-one. Even if their man isn't live, isn't in the active lane, they're very keyed in, and it gives the Hodags the opportunity to pretty much be on an isolated island downfield. Uh, even from the handlers, there's no poaching into a lane to put them to move the disc to a sideline. I would like to see more of that. However, if if their practice and training is in man to man, I think Andrew Rook is good to stick with it. Yeah, you can. T I think it's just a defensive philosophy yep. that he's instilled. He watching this this team, I've seen more face guarding downfield than any other team I've, I've ever watched um, at the college level, maybe even at the club level. And I don't think it's serving them well right now. This one going out the back, giving Wisconsin a short field to work with, trying to take half. Disc is out the back of the end zone. Number 12, Alex Simmons. Here we get a good look from, from a stop disc at where Wisconsin's cutters set up. Looks like we may see some sort of poachy defense Yes, Here's we see some a zone here from Central Florida. Liu. This looks like a 2-2-2-1. Two, 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 Almost overthrown. Wisconsin comes down with it. Hodeg offense doing a great job spreading out the defense with their spacing. Big drop there by oh. Donovan. Opportunity for Central Florida. Hickson. This is the time where he usually looks for Freistadter, often getting a mismatch off of a turn. Call on the play. Timeout called by Central Florida, looks like. Smart call here with an opportunity to get one of the points back before half. Let's talk about the swing that might be about to occur. Hodegs had the disc on the, on the goal line and threw that thing across the front of the end zone. Would have made it 8-5. And realistically, it's not a terrible throw, but in my opinion, it's just not necessary. Just like da Dayu Lu's throw to the other break side, it they can score easier. Now maybe it's maybe it's their game. Take risks, take risks. That backhand huck that that dropped that uh, was caught for a break. That's a risk, and maybe they they live and die by risk. That's that's their mo. However, I simply didn't think it was necessary, and a, and a timeout could have been could have given them the halftime. So could have been eight five. Here we are. This if. Central Florida can punch it in 7-7, seven, seven, and they have the momentum. This would be a break. They could potentially take half now when they were almost down 8-5 at half. Prediction here, I think we're going to see a zipper oh, yeah. from the back. The I think two players are going to come under. Someone's going to go deep, and they're going to bomb this thing. Daniel Jacob on the field for one of the first times this game. Known for his big hucks for Central Florida. This checked in. Raleigh Adams finding Reedy. Hickson coming underneath. Frey Stoddard. Hickson not hesitating. This one lofty. Can't come up with a big D. That's a great matchup. Colin Camp against Frey Stoddard. And you can tell that this Central Florida handler just said, uh oh. Frey Satter is just shading deep, and he just put it. He wasn't open at all when he threw it. Just said, I got my best receiver down there. And Camp made an incredible play to keep Frey Satter boxed out and then make a play. Back into this UCF zone, I believe it's actually like a 1-3-2-1 one, one with a 1 marking. Three behind as a wall, and then two wings and a deep. Over the top, beats him again, Camp. Transitioning into man. Swung around back. Simmons calls a timeout. Dueling timeouts. I like it. Timeout, Wisconsin. It's getting hotter. Uh, the sun's starting to beat down. You can see everybody's bringing water out of the field. I'm, I'm curious to see, uh, to see how they react. Let's see. Let's see what, what Wisconsin's saying here.
So it's clear, if you could hear that, we're going to get a good look at Wisconsin's Sex Panther set up here. Alex, Apparently that's their, their end zone the offensive set. Sounds like it. Sounds As they've potent. labeled it, yeah. 50% of the time. All the time. Really interesting setup here. I, I was expecting to see more space created by the cutters, but we've got actually two cutters uh, downfield and then three in the, in the end zone. Makes Seven. it really hard for, to figure out which space to throw to on offense. Hickson laying out late, Camp with the catch. Simmons, looking for an option up the line. Looks a backhand, Camp. All on the play. Let's see how they set up this end zone. With a foul call here, they've got time to talk about it. Before, there's whatever that, that setup was, uh, there's three across and a diamond in the back. Camp on the goal line, looking back for Simmons. Simmons makes the move, flip backhand. Simmons comes in, ruled for a goal, and Wisconsin takes half, eight to six. That's, that is my absolute favorite uh, dump end zone set. You set up on the open side at a 45 degree back, and you get you can take either the, the dump to the behind, to the break side, or that up line. And when you're, when the force is backhand, it's a very easy up line throw, as we just saw. Incredibly hard to guard. Puts the defense in an absolutely horrible position because he can if he can only take away one thing he's giving up something very threatening on the other side and realistically what he should be taking away is that up line that's the goal shot what he's got to give up is the break side dump can andrew roca rally his defense we'll find out in the second half as we come back after a short break this is next gen network's coverage of the 2012 college championships welcome back to the second half of wisconsin versus central florida here in boulder colorado part of Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships. I'm Brian Jones here with Mario O'Brien and Tyler Kinley. Big thanks to our sponsor. Today's games encoded by Elemental Technologies, providing video processing solutions to deliver streaming content to any screen, anytime, anywhere, all at once. Central Florida coming into the second half has got to be looking for some adjustments to be made. What, what sort of things can we expect in Central Florida to be trying? Central Florida has got to find a way to stop the Hodag offense. Adjustments have to be made downfield. They're doing an, a, an okay here, job taking away the, like, the, the initial Hodag play, eight. but once the University Hodag cutters throw it downfield, Florida, there's absolutely, absolutely zero resistance dogs from the Central the Florida cutters. The One of the keys I've seen from uh, the Hodags is whenever they get a, a, a reset, or a, a, whenever they move the disc to a handler who's going upfield, they have success. It eats up that distance between them and the cutters. It all of a sudden opens up that deep shot by putting the handler into a power position. And whether or not they take it, they have many more opportunities. When the dogs of war like force the hoodags backwards, it extends that difference between the handlers and the cutters and keeps keeps the uh, UCF downfielders in that fronted position in a really good spot to play deep. Um, preventing that up line from the hoodags is gonna be key to UCF's victory. Absolutely, anything that prevents them from getting downfield, whether that's poaching from the handlers and forcing downfield, whether that's fronting and ant anticipating that the Hodag cutters are gonna come underneath, something needs to change for Central Florida's defense. Otherwise, the Hodag offense is gonna roll and their defense is gonna stay fired up. How many plays did they make in the first half? A lot. In the first point. Coolidge with three Ds earlier in the first half as we get started here. Wisconsin, an opportunity to go up nine to six, extend their lead by virtue of their breaks in the first half. Simmons. Over to Park. Simmons. Central Florida trying to shut down the man downfield. Hickson just too slow to catch up. Back to Simmons. You can see this Hodak offense, it, it's four lateral passes to a gainer. We might see another four lateral passes to another gainer. It's patient, but not efficient. It's not efficient. The restarts flip up, big bid by Central Florida. Overthrown immediately afterwards. 
another call on the play. Unforced turn by the Hodags. Again, Central Florida hasn't really been making plays defensively. It's been the Hodags turning it over without even a threat of a D. Looks like there's a call on the throw. Looks like there was a little bit of contact there coming from behind. The Observer play. overruled. No foul. No foul. This one going Central Florida's way. Observer overruled. Dogs we talked down. about so far, though, Alex Simmons. Plethora of touches. 22 touches, only one turnover so far for Wisconsin. He has been facilitating that offense. This is what UCF needed. Down 8-6. This is crucial. Best. Valentine, back to Best. Nixon underneath. Best out to space. This is a huge gainer. Comes up with it. Best flips for the score, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered. And that's all Best. He swung to the open side, followed his throw, went up line, kept his advantage. Frey Stutter led him to space, a dangerous throw, and then punches it in for the easy, basically, handoff goal. Spectacular management of the game by the handling co handler core, and especially best for the Dogs of War. This is huge, huge for the Dogs of War's mental composure. Uh, after that point, everybody's fired up. It's clear that that got them sight. Now they're on D. I, I can't imagine there'll be anything but physical and, and uh, this is gonna be an exciting deep point to watch. That's my guess. We talk so much about Alex Simmons having to facilitate the Wisconsin office. John Best has been his counterpart, touching the this 20 times with only two turnovers, making the difference there after the turnover. And we talk so much about Central Florida adjustments out coming in the second half. Wisconsin had built a lead on what looked to be risky throws. Do you change any of that if you're Wisconsin? I would say no. You gotta ride your game. Absolutely, and they've been maybe, you could call it unlucky, you could say they've been too risky, but when those things are clicking, it is that you can build an insurmountable lead, and against an inexperienced team like Central Florida, that should be your goal. Huge flick pull. This is the pull they needed. Fantastic. Sitting in the back of the end zone, Simmons getting it now in the middle. That's Colin Camp getting open for them. That's, that's the necessary one for them. And that's a tough matchup for Hickson. Camp is lightning quick, and, and it's going to be really hard for him to stay, on, stay up underneath him. Spice. There's Camp. Ooh. Can't make the catch. Foul call in this play. Looked like it was already out of the reach before contact was made. And this is just another unforced error by the Hodags. Camp was wide open underneath. Handler make, made a lazy throw to space. Camp couldn't adjust early enough, resulted in what could be a turnover. No reason to throw this one out to space, just hit him in the chest. Camp saying that he felt some, some pushing from the back. Discussion. Things have been kept mostly civil this game here, a nice discussion between Camp and Hickson. Now going to the observer. Observers have a majority of the time ruled no foul as we've, as we've been watching today. Most of the time saying, let them play, contact is gonna happen. It, it didn't affect the play, no foul. An opportunity here for the Dogs of War to, to tie the game at eight. Big call there, foul is overruled. Park left, scratching his head. Excuse me, Camp. Nixon normally would pick this disc up on a fast break opportunity for Central Florida. Roca noted at halftime that Wisconsin was doing a great job of switching up their matchup after a turnover. Valentine. Reedy. Valentine. This is the kind of diligent, uh, regimented offense that I really like out of the Dogs of War. They've got a nice hostack. Frystatter's in the back. 
They're using their handlers well, going up line, attacking that up line while, while hitting the, the swing and any overcommitment. Oh, right that's there. disappointing though. Thrown behind. Both players try to take the thrower, and this one's easy. Wisconsin goes up nine to seven. That is a missed opportunity for Central Florida at a, at a critical time. Truly unfortunate. And how will they react? This is when Andrew Roca's leadership becomes even more important. talked about it at the at the top of the broadcast. The leaders need to lead, and if Central Florida wants to stay in this game, it's gotta be on Roca, of course, but Best, Freistatter, Hickson, Ogren, those guys have to make sure that the team stays mentally composed to maybe just trade for a couple points and, and score a goal, feel good about the work that you're doing, and just capitalize on those opportunities. The opportunities are there and they just haven't capitalized on them. On the flip the side, on the flip side, you know Hector Valdivia is saying, put the boot to the throat. This is when you attack as a defender. Attack, attack, attack. And the volume goes up immediately. The Hodag sideline is loud. The crowd is getting involved. You're exactly right, Tyler. They're going for the kill right now. Wiseman, blade, backhand pull. I like it. This one falls through the cracks. Best to Nations. Back to best. And we see a zone from Wisconsin trying to change things up. Looks like three in the front with a, a loose man in the back. And they're out of it. Transitioning out, just trying to. Oh, I love that D. That's fantastic. Gets him out of any pull plays. And now, hard, hard, hard man. Call on the play. Foul called by Wharton. You know, it's especially advantageous for the Hodak D because a lot of times when you play zone offense, you spread out your players. Central Florida's offense is a vertical stack. So when they transition into man, it takes the Central Florida offensive players a second to realize, and it takes them another few seconds to even get back in the formation where they can attack the field. Wisconsin's intensity has stepped up once again. Another bid on a dump. That is... Lots of switching of the mark here, too. Foul call on the play. Call. To notice on this point, watch where Freistatter is. For a majority of the beginning of this point, he hung out very deep. Now you can see him at the front of that vert stack, right in the middle of the stream. That is best. Another layout. This one late from Wisconsin. Freistatter again, very, very deep. Not an underneath threat. Finally coming under but too much traffic for him to get anything under. This is almost the Central Florida of old that we had seen. Grace Stoddard hanging out in the deep lane, waiting for an opportunity up the sideline. And I'm seeing a little bit of the immaturity of Frey Stoddard's game. He needs to know that he just needs to call to his handler, say, hey, 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 they're backing me. Frey Stoddard going deep, and this one's too far. Wiseman slaps it down easily. Freistadter needs to know when he's getting back, he needs to get the handler's attention, move into the handler, plant, come underneath for a big gainer. It's as simple as that. Does It's not tricky, it's just recognizing that you are you have a mismatch and you need to take advantage. The Hodag's doing a very good job of taking what's given. Right now they're being given the underneath, using it well. Big foot deep, over giving chase, Four Bettis on there one. as well. Goes up, gets the D. Oh, that looked painful. Big collision there. A foul call here will be iffy. Once again, though, we see Central Florida not being able to recover after a turnover leads to an uncontested huck on the mark. And I got to eat my words a little bit. I said they were taking what they were given. They were not given that. That's that, that's that forcing, hodag, risky, risky shot. I think you're going to see that there actually was some contact before he went up, but it might have been on the back side of the play. You can see that he got definitely got bumped before he was able to make a play by number nine. There's the contact, and, num and he makes the, the play. 
Tough it, call for the observers. I think it's the right call. Looked like looked like Best there almost had position. There was an arm bar. Oh. A drop of the end zone by Bettis. Big opportunity, big mistake for Central Florida. A lot of times what you see here is the frustrated, the frustrated Colonel dropper Lee of this overplays on D. And a timeout by Wisconsin. Alexander calling the timeout. And we'll see if Wisconsin can punch this chance in when we back, be back right after a short break. This is Next Gen Network's coverage of the 2012 College Championships. I'm Dylan Freechild. People often ask me, Dylan, how do you get prepared for the next gen tour? We're back in Boulder, Wisconsin on the goal line, coming out of a timeout, a chance to extend their lead to 10-7. Here in the second half, Alexander looking for the break, flips it for the easy goal. And Central Florida's defense was just lined up on the wrong side of the disc. Wisconsin looks comfortable right now. They look comfortable playing incredibly hard and playing their game. And they have no reason not to be comfortable. They, they've been here a million times before. They thrive in this environment. Hodegs really spreading it around. 10 players right now with at least a goal or an assist. The Hodegs are hungry. They want this game over now. Last round of pool play, day one of pool play today. Tomorrow we'll go into two more games of pool play and then in the pre-quarters for the unlucky guys that have to, unlucky teams that have to stick around for not winning their pool. Again, to reiterate, no team in the last several years that has gone through pre-quarters has made semis. That extra game proving to be the difference. With this game here for the pool in Pool D, you might see Central Florida's realistic chances for a championship take a hit. Center to best. Braystarter coming in underneath. Flips the best, unmarked. No, we have a stoppage on the play. Looks like there's a foul called on best's cut. A little bit of an ankle breaker cut there, maybe from best. It's clear UCF needs best to perform, and, and, and he's performing well this game. Looks like it was an injury call Number three, for Kelsey the cut. Alexander in to replace him. Looks like Simmons might just be out for a point. Be huge if that was a loss. Dogs aboard this. He's the first time to initiate play. Trey Stider. Finding best up line, another great move. Putting out the space, Langdon. Langdon reads it, makes the catch off of the bobble in Central Florida. Makes it 10 nice to 8. A little de delayed, delayed reaction there. Interesting spike for a bobbly catch. He's pumped, and University of what Central I take Florida from that, eight. he spikes it, he's University psyched. His team 10. hesitant. To rush the field, they just did. I, I'm not seeing a Central Florida that I need to see to say they're really in this game right now. Not to say they can't be in this game, 
but they need they need energy. Wiseman taking the direct path to the disc and sort of floating over his head. Ten eight Hodags. A break here for UCF is a momentum changer. This is potentially where you load up your D-line. Still a lot of game left to play. Number Getting momentum here Robinson can really swing, swing the game, change the, change the momentum. Such a Florida, Michael Hickson has been such an important player over the course of this year. And I think he's been lacking a little bit. He needs to step up on these points. He's drawing a tough matchup, but when you draw that tough matchup, you have to deliver. So far, he's used to guarding smaller players, but their speed has been able to get him. Liu. Colin Camp is gone at that point. Donovan along the sideline, hicks it there. Out to space, Marshall tips it. This one bobbled. Can't come down with it. A foul called on the play. And lots of arguing from Central Florida. Ooh. John be Best comes in to calm things down. I'd be interested to see the replay of this. Observer comes in and rules immediately. No foul. He missed the disc. The D was made. Central Florida disc. There's zero chance that was a foul. Gray Snyder had a productive first half so far in this game, but ever since then, it's been on the legs of best that Central Florida has had any movement. Gray Snyder still only with two assists and two goals. You know, it, it's incredible to think about the benefit of having observers in these games. Think about how many calls we, we've had just in this game that probably would have gone back and stayed with the offense just because there was no observer. Hickson. Out to Langdon. Good holster. Hickson. UCF looking like they've got a bit of a renewed energy here. That's they look confident. Just, putting it, this one out to space. Reedy is there, makes the easy catch. Where was the D? Oh, that's just a great throw. Yeah, the D was in the right place. Best beat his mark through to the space where the, def the defense could not get to it. A break mark hug to the far sideline is almost impossible to defend. And that's a good player making a good play. I don't even think it was a bad mark at all. As a first live streamed game for the open side, this is a good one. I could not say who's gonna run, run away with this. Neither team, neither team is showing that they are just head, head and shoulders above the other. Each is taking punches, each is making mistakes. It's been a season and a game of adjustments for Central Florida. Again, going back to warm up and cool play. Wisconsin edging Central Florida out in February and then Central Florida getting revenge on Wisconsin in the semifinal. But it's been a long time and we've seen multiple adjustments across the season for both teams. Multiple adjustments in this game. Wisconsin come out with totally different lines to start out. Central Florida definitely mixing things up. Andrew Roca trying his best to do something different each defensive point. You know, the line changes might have something to do with the miscues we've seen from Wisconsin. There have not been many Ds from Central Florida on Wisconsin. There we saw a strange up line that I expected to be caught wasn't that led to a D. Another was an up line that it looked like a miscommunication just thrown into the ground. Uh, if UCF can start getting Ds, they could be in this game, they could, they could run away with it. If Wisconsin can stop turning it over with these sort of strange miscues, they could run away with it. Coffin corner, Paul. They just, Central Florida just needs to get a D. Hart, beautiful backhand. And Camp reels it in. Bray Stoddard cannot catch up. Wisconsin leads 11 to nine. That's another example of good positioning by Freistatter while the disc is in the handler's hands. As soon as it advances up the field, he is far too underneath, and we see him pay the price there. The Central Florida player made a bid on the disc, could provide no mark, and the throw becomes an incredibly easy backhand to space. You can see here, defender comes in. Easy backhand to space. 
Price had her cut underneath. Camp, easy goal. Coming into this game, Roca liked the opportunity for deep matchups, wanting to force Wisconsin to throw those hucks. And so far, Wisconsin has been able to convert in just a few more to maintain this two-point lead. Well, some of the things that need to change in order for that to be effective are you can't overcommit on that underneath. The mark has to be present to force that huck to be around somehow. It can't just be a straight, easy, open backhand or open flick. It's got to be forced to, to have some bend to it, give it some shape, add some time in the air for a defender like Bryce Harris to, to catch up. Otherwise, you see it like that. It's just going to sit in front of the offender. No chance for the defender to catch up. That was Camp's fourth goal of the game. He's also got one assist. Oh, fantastic pull. This, pull sitting this in is what corner. Wisconsin wants. Bettis. Back in the end zone. Bray Stoddard. That's the fry center we need. Best putting this one deep. Oh, great deep. Thrown. Ball on the play. We'll see what the replay has to say about this one. I think the replay is going to say that number three made a great play. Let's see it again. Was his, Whose hand was in front? That's the key. That's a D. That looks like a clean D here. The observer rules no foul. A rare mistake there from Best on that hook. That one just needed to be the flat bomb rather than the blade. The blade actually caught a little bit of wind and, and made the, uh, the receiver make a play. He just needs to put that out in, into space, let the Colorado air take care of the rest. Wiseman putting this one deep. Bettis giving chase. Potentially Stumbles a deep, bit. But, oh, just wow. out of reach. Slight crosswind now coming towards our booth. That would be for the handler right now. It would be going left to right as he looks downfield. Bullock, best once again getting things started. Big layout, unmarked. No throw deep. Wharton. Bullock. Another bid on a handler. Coolidge going for it. This one, miscommunication. And truly, the Central Florida's not changing anything about their game. They've, they've found some success, gotten lucky on a couple hooks, have relied on best to make some pinpoint throws. And you can see that they don't have the ability to just manufacture a goal with the, their core offensive set. Coolidge. At least not against great defense. Nobody home. Hart. Round to Wiseman. Goes to the ground. Alter. Everyone on the field is dog tired right now. This one's important for both squads. Sue Grass. Wiseman finds an opening. And Wisconsin, could that be the boot on the throat? They lead 12-9. The interesting thing about that offense is it, it, it was emblematic of a tired cutting line, but it looked better. They, they, only the cutters that were on stage uh, were active. The rest, the rest let them work, gave them space, and the offense looked good. Simmons is playing great. Two goals, three assists. Only one turnover for the whole game. Looks like we have a timeout on the field by Central Florida. The necessary move from Andrew Roca. With your, how tired your offense is and how much tunnel vision we've been seeing. I want to send a special shout out to our, our stat keepers trying out a new stat keeping system 
leaguevine.com. You can keep track of all of the stats for most of the games that we're going to be doing this weekend in real time. Those guys really pushing the envelope and allowing us to have access to this information. I think that's really going to change the game moving forward. If we can have a comprehensive set of stats for this sport, I think it's going to influence how we make decisions as leaders, how captains play lines. We've got plus minus, we've got percentages. It's, it's really going to have an effect on the game if we can get systems like this up and running. How do you rate a best versus a Simmons? A lot of times, ultimate is done by feel. The statistics would be able to have a great way of measuring that. Both teams with one timeout remaining, and we have a minute till soft cap, so this will likely be either a game to 14 or 15, depending on a few C efforts for Wisconsin scores. Both teams coming into this game one and zero. Uh, Central Florida overtook Michigan State in the first round, 15 to eight. And Wisconsin, uh, excuse me, Wisconsin beat Minnesota Duluth 15-9 to start the day. Uh, whoever wins this game ends the day 2-0. Uh, however, a loss is not terrible. You can still get second in the pool. You can move on handily. But the pressure's really on at that point. You have to win out. Nations centering the best. Langdon. Wharton with a drop along the sideline. And Wisconsin putting that pressure on the throw. They've been here before and it's showing. Camp underneath. Turns back now upfield. Good. Huge bid wow. by Mike Ogren. Almost got the D, Becker. Marshall, bid by Wisconsin to save possession. Riemann, back to Marshall. Here's that Hodeg end zone set. No space created, it's just like they're, they're looking around. It's almost like they're playing zone offense, just kind of standing around, trying to point and shoot. For an option, foul called on the play. Nations a little overzealous on the mark. Looks like we got a foul called on that. No contest, counts at zero. Three cutters across the end zone line. Turnover, Wisconsin. No, no space to either side of the field. Yeah, I gotta ask, where do you cut if you have three cutters standing on the, on the end zone line? Where do you cut? And if you're a thrower, where are you even looking to throw? Hickson with a sliding grab. Putting this one deep, too far. And Central Florida just looks gassed at this point. Before this point, I saw Central Florida players on the line Looks like we have a cramping. Back in the Looks like we've got throw. some more cramping, maybe an injury here from Hickson. And an injury. Mike Hickson. You'll see this field. on the huck. He bombs this huck and then he hits the ground. Something happened to that, that leg, that knee. Hickson obviously frustrated that he has to come out of the game right now. He wants to be in there. He's earned the right to be in there, but his body just Foul won't let him. In for Mike Hickson. Interesting to see Central Florida coming from a hot and humid environment you would think would be ready to handle the atmosphere more so than Wisconsin. But here, the dryness of the air and the elevation and the intensity of the sun just does as much damage. Oh. Foul on the throw. Foul on the throw. Marshall. The Simmons. Hammer. Can't make the catch. Horrible decision on the type of catch he tried to make. Go up with two hands. Stay on the ground with two hands. Interesting choice, leads to a turnover, Langdon. Too far out in front, and right now nothing's working for Central Florida. 
Simmons. You can really see that the Hodag offense, they don't even try to attack downfield when the disc is on the side. Oh, goodness, that is a heck of a foot block. Still staying alive. Best. Going for the hammer. Why? Too far. This is fatigue creating decision making. I do not like the UCF offense. Wisconsin calls timeout. Smart Multiple decision. hands on heads. UCF cannot be pleased with that. This is almost a must away lucky. score point for UCF with only 15 minutes to left till hard cap. And we've and we talked at the top about the leaders needing to lead mentally as well as physically. Best hasn't been the best leader in terms of his decision making in these in these late stages of the game. Let's see what they're talking about. Roka focusing on the mental aspect of the game, not necessarily the physical. And I think he's exactly right at this point in the game. I like what he said too, because it could be the case that, uh, that Wisconsin's actually not as tired. However, he frames it in such a way that even if they don't look tired, they are. So it's putting them in a good mental position. Hey, they're, they're as tired as you are, even if they don't look it. I like it. You know, no matter what happens to Central Florida here in this game or at this weekend, I think I think Andy Roca is he's really building a program. He's got the right attitude. He really believes in building. He's a great motivator. And Central Florida's got a good future ahead of them, regardless of what happens this weekend. Marshall, a little wary there. Simmons, big fakes upfield. The Hodags offense looks good when they move that this quickly. Center of the field, Marshall. Forced to go back to Riemann. Bullet pass. Good catch by Becker. Looking back. Forcing it up the middle of the field. Geppert. Simmons. Here's that Hodag end zone set. Central Florida trying to find a will to produce the D. Wisconsin regaining composure, jump swinging. Simmons saving the day once again. Camp now looking back, finding Simmons. Upfield, wide open, gets the goal, and that might be the game. Wisconsin leads 13 to 9. I don't see any way that Central Florida can, can come back from this one. They are tired. They are mentally tired. You can see it on them physically. Their hands are above their heads. They know that this one has slipped away from them. Hodags are going to take this one. After the game, make sure that you visit the next uh, the NGN Facebook page to vote for the elemental cap. player of the game. 13, One voter will Central receive an Florida elemental prize nine. pack with two discs, a t-shirt, and an aluminum water bottle. Alex Simmons had right there was a workhorse for Wisconsin. The keys of the game, he had to facilitate the offense, and that's exactly what he did. Helped Wisconsin regain their composure. The Hodags also did a great job of containing Freisatter. He made some plays early in the game, but second half he's been absolutely shut down. Credit the Hodag defense. Dave Credit Coach Valdivia for putting, to get, putting together a good plan. The Hodags executed today. Hodag style of play. Hodags look like they're ready for another run at the championship. So far, all four top seeds have held with ease today. Oregon, Pittsburgh, Carlton, 
and Wisconsin. Wisconsin, the last team to go through the 1-2 matchup in their pool. It looks like it may be a tournament of favorites. Nations. Dixon. Wharton. Now up the sideline. Trying to go back to what Central Florida does best. Jacob. Roca switching up ball home. Players now at this point putting in an offense, recognizing that his guys were not getting the job done. Okay, Matt Carlson along with Jacob on the play. Excellent break mark throw there by Central Florida. You'll nice. see more of that. Reedy. Carlson. Jacob. Good movement. Bryce Dotter underneath. Reedy. And Ogren takes it. Number seven, Matt Reedy into the end zone for number 43, Matt Nations. Some sort of call here. Matt Nations like with the goal, the but play. we have a call. Both teams' offenses have, have subtly switched into moving the disc quickly. Quickly below stall three. I mean, this is the type of offense you like to see. This is good, effective Four offense. And here we Matt saw Reed. Central Florida just attacking the mark. Yeah. Multiple inside backhands, breaking the mark for an uncontested pass. And there's another one. Hicks in with the tight dish wow. for the score. Halfback dive. Daniel Jacob was absolutely huge on that play. He threw three inside out break backhands that opened up the field and gave them what I think is maybe their easiest goal of the game that was just based on taking what the defense gave them. And in that case, they was just taking advantage of the backhand mark. That inside out backhand is a really easy throw. If I'm the Hodags, I gotta force forehand. At, at the very least, next point. Next point, yeah. I have not written off the dogs of war. Right now, they need to have a good pull. The, a pull is crucial to this point. Staying inbounds that they can then get down on and pin the Hodags back. Beyond that, they need to front with a man helping deep. Pin the Hodags and force a lot of those lateral movement swings. From points before, some of those swings were dicey. They had to make plays, layouts, you know, skying up to get to get an awkward throw. Front those downfielders with some help on the deep and really Our pressure those swings. Minutes. Really gotta give Roka credit here. He he did what was necessary by switching up the lines. He gave a fresh perspective by putting new players in, in positions they hadn't played. And as a result, they're playing differently than before with new combinations. Ogren with the pull, and this might be just what they needed, this Tyler. This forehand pull is good. Park. It can't be an easy underneath here. Finding camp. Ogren now shutting down, trying to take out camp. Simmons. The strategy is a bit, a bit baffling to me here defensively. They've got a flat mark, the but they're not fronting downfield. Most of the time, if, you want, if you're going to throw a flat mark, that's going to cause the offensive players to have to, if they're going to huck, it's going to have to be a bendy one that you can make a play on. If you're going to have a flat you. mark, sit underneath your man. And the Hodags have thrown two or three underneath passes for big gainers. Counts at four. Coming in on four. Check back in. Simmons. Back to Simmons now centered. Open. Jacob trying to come back and cut off Liu. Allowing these lateral passes. Waiting for underneath. Park wanting to take a shot. Back to Simmons. No yardage gain. Camp comes down with it. Big flip, Liu. Out of bounds. Out of Turn bounds. This is what I was talking about. Wait, wait, wait. Let those handlers think and dunk it. I like that D. Greedy picking up the disc. Jacob still on the field. Get it off the sideline. Bryce Tedder's got to get involved with this play. He's been quiet all half. Now is his time to take advantage. He's Here coming he out into the lane. Bryce Tedder. 
Looking deep, trying to do it with his throws. We have a call on the play. Pick. Price there being marked by Pat Donovan, who is six foot five himself. A battle of Ents on the field. Not a game I fit into very well. I'll tell you what, I love it when those big guys match up against me. Put them in, put them in the spin cycle. Rystadter, play restarts. Finding Reedy. Good defense downfield to shut that down. Jacob. Up to Reedy, makes the grab. No call, yes. And a little bit of momentum favors Central Florida. 13-11. And you can feel it now, too. Both the momentum and the wind are picking up. That is good for Central Florida getting the disc. Time is running out. Central Florida must score in the next six minutes in order to extend this game, or else we'll get the hard cap. This is where you wonder if Andrew Roca knows that. Good news for Central Florida is Wisconsin has no timeouts here. The observer is going to make sure that we're going to have the time between the points. It's going to get down. They'll have five minutes to score one. Then hard cap will come on. They will play the next point. Central Florida would then be able to tie it and then send it to Universe. Hodags taking their sweet time on the line lining up for this one. They know exactly what's going on right now. They know if they're at the cap. They know that they need to maintain the possession of the disc. A slight crosswind coming. Uh, the wind is the wind is shifty. Hodag's going slightly downwind here. A good hanging pull. Daniel Jacob, the first one down on the pull. Finding the underneath. Park putting this one deep. Too far for Becker. Here they go. Four minutes and 30 seconds, and Hickson knows it. And oh. he floats this one. No. Hickson immediately hanging his head. That was a lost opportunity. Needing a goal line stand this here. Back to Wisconsin on the turnover. Oh, heartbreaking. This one turfed. What is happening? A foul call on the play. This one's coming back no matter what. Foul call on the throw. Really here, you need a serious Central Florida, you need a quick ruling on this play. Three minutes, 45 seconds left on the game clock until the cap. Central Florida needs to score to get the deficit to one point before the cap goes on. Every second ticks away, foul called. Three minutes and 30 seconds. And at this point, if, if the Hodags score this goal, the game's pretty much over. There's not enough time Ball for to make up a three this. goal deficit with only three minutes left in the cap. This is the most important moment for Central Florida. Time to man up on D. Simmons. Luckily, up line. Florida's end zone offense Hammer is to the weird. back. Gets the play, and we have three minutes to go. No I, rush here for Central Florida, though. If that's what Sex Panther is, it's not working. Hasn't even worked 50% of the time. <laughs> Jacob. Comes. Big bid, Wharton. Oh, on the play. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Central Florida, again, must score before that point. Back to Bettis. Thrown into a oh. poach, and this wow. one is deed. We call on the play in two minutes to go. The receivers just didn't know who was supposed to go after the Hammer disc. to space. Caught. And Wisconsin 
takes the 14 to 11. I want to see a replay of that layout D. I, I have a question about that layout D. Here we go. We see it again. And this is a foregone conclusion, oh. unfortunately. That's unfortunate. The receivers just didn't know that it was being thrown. They didn't know the disc was in the air. So many heartbreaks on that point alone. Too much time right now. Wisconsin can milk the rest of the clock. This game is over. Barring a miraculous It's college. Fumble. Anything can happen. Wisconsin claiming they can actually almost kneel down the clock here by play the next point. Talking about players of the game this game, I, regardless of any turnovers, best was crucial for Central Florida. Freistatter made plays, but I think they best shouldered the load of responsibility uh, overall for Central Florida. Play, there were some playmakers, but he was the focal point. On, on Wisconsin, Park, Dayulu, Simmons. Simmons, they were getting it done. Colin Camp, you, you, how do you stop him? All he, all he does is catch touchdowns. I, I disagree. He had a ton of unders. He is, he is a threat. He is, he is a fantastic player to have on your team. Well, here's the lay of the land at the end of the game. Alex Simmons with 41 throws, 38 completions for a 93% completion percentage. Colin Camp getting 18 touches, four goals and an assist. But really the remark here is the amount of players that have one point on the sister or a goal for Wisconsin. One, two, three, that nine, point. ten. And we have ten players again with a goal and assist compared to looking at Central Florida. Not as many. One yeah. player, many. One player as well who stood out, Callahan nominee for Wisconsin, uh, Wiseman. Yeah. He made plays. He made Freistetter work. He made plays all over the field. Uh, it's clear why he's their Callahan nomination. Here come the dogs of war. With the hard cap on, this game is over. Wisconsin will win it. Central Florida playing for pride now. Bettis. Interesting you point to, to play this one. At this point, you're just hoping no one gets hurt. You never know if point differential could play a role. Should there be an upset tomorrow? But deep. This Hopefully one going that out stays the back. in. Looked okay, like Wisconsin yeah. would have almost given that to Central Florida. This the last round of the day, and from looking around the field, the last game still being played of the day. There might be one more on the field, but this one going into the cap. Most players trickling out. Number 15, Kyle Geppert to initiate. You couldn't play. have asked for a prettier day of ultimate. Tomorrow may bring high amount of wins in Wisconsin. Going for the death now. Do you might actually have an opportunity. D by Central Florida. Injury called. That was just strange. There was no one there, and I guess throw it high enough, make it sit enough, someone will get there. Trying to just end this game, it looks like, for Wisconsin. Number five, William Ward, looks like he's shaken up after that D. Uh, looked like he came down awkwardly on one of his feet. The lay of the land is this. We go to Pool A. We have Oregon leading today, 2-0. and Georgia Tech, 1-1. and Minnesota, 1-1. North Carolina, 1-1. and And Ohio, 0-2. Oh That's Georgia Tech upsetting Minnesota, correct? Upsetting North Carolina. North Carolina, excuse me. Minnesota losing to Oregon. North Carolina losing to Tech and Ohio, 0-2. Oh Pool B, we have Pittsburgh, 2-0. and Texas, 2-0. and Luther, 1-1, and losing to Pittsburgh. Michigan, 0-2. Oh Heartbreaking loss to Luther on Universe. California Davis giving Texas a game, but losing 15-12. And Pool C, we have Carleton College 2-0, Colorado 2-0. Tufts 1-1 loss to Carleton. We'll face Colorado tomorrow. Washington Cornell both at 0-2. And, and Pool D, we of course have Wisconsin and Central Florida. Wisconsin will go 2-0. Central Florida 1-1. One one. Michigan State sitting at 1-1. One one, upsetting Michigan State on Universe, upsetting California. This one is just garbage time in Wisconsin. 
Scores the goal. Troubling here, where Freistetter is down. Injury was actually called the before the throw. And this is what I was talking about. This is why this is a tough. Let's get Freistetter. Here they got him on the ground. He's being tended to. It might be a cramp, but you hope that that's all it is. A little bit. Uh, looks like he no, may have I twisted he, an ankle. Uh, I'm worried he pulled, he pulled a hamstring there. It looked like even before he jumped, something happened. It could have been a twisted ankle. You really hope it's nothing worse. Let's see him walking up oh, the field. Oh, it looked like an inside twist. Yeah. He's like well, he stepped left ankle right there. He stepped on a foot. It's like number 14. It looks Jason like he's Price walking off relatively fine, though. Shaking up on the play, he planted his the left field. foot onto someone else's cleat, and it twisted inward. Going back to some of the results from the earlier today, University of Washington almost upsetting Tufts. Very close double game point barn burner. Um, on the women's side, University of Washington element getting beaten on double game point by Iowa. Back to the men's side, again, that, that Luther game being down to Michigan most of the game and then coming back to take the game on double game point. It's been an exciting day of ultimate. We'll see. Looking forward to tomorrow with our NGN coverage. We've got Carlton going against the three seed in their pool, Colorado. And an interesting piece of trivia here. I think most people have Oregon or Pittsburgh making it to the final. But it's interesting to note that Wisconsin was in the final and lost last year. Now, Wisconsin, after going to finals in 2002 and losing, they bounds. won in 2003. Same thing happened recently. They lost in finals. They went back the next year. It also happened in 2000 to Carlton. They lost in finals, came back to win the next year. Wisconsin lost in finals this past year, and Carlton won. So a lot of interesting trends going on. If history repeats itself again, that would mean the Hodags would actually take the championship again, even though I don't think they're, they're favored to even get into that championship game. Most people prob them ha probably have them at a semis at best. Yep. They have not shown the dominance that you, that you would attribute to a normal Hodags championship team. What does that mean, though? This one might end this game. Langdon comes down with it. And that will make the Thank final score, 14 to 12, Friday. Wisconsin wins. Sorry, Mike Nixon, into the end zone. Jeremy Langdon, number 25. Both teams filing on, these the points are always score. tough. Played University out though, painful landing, big spike.